Hey guys, this is John Carroll again here with another episode of Forward Talk with my friend Alan, Alan McMillan. Yes. And as you see, this awesome water bottle that has their church logo on it, Lighthouse here in Kingsport, uh, Tennessee. Uh, check out their Facebook page. Check out their website. Uh, go subscribe to their YouTube channel. The links for all of that, uh, for all of their uh, social media pages, etc., will be in the show notes. So please check out the Lighthouse, an amazing church here. Uh, Pastor McMillan is a, uh, a great preacher, visionary, great friend, and so uh, we're excited about doing <clears throat> this episode as well. And so what we're going to be talking about in this episode of Forward Talk with, with Alan is uh, what it's like to be a modern church and how the modern church needs to stay true to being a Book of Acts church. And as Pentecostals, obviously, so much of who we are and what we do is centered in the book of Acts. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today is yes. being a, a, a first century church <clears throat> Absolutely. in a 21st century world. I love it. And what, and what that looks like. So uh, the first question is, how close do you think the contemporary church should model the first century church as seen through the lens of the book of Acts? I think the greatest church growth book that you can read is, the book, is the book of Acts. Now, when it comes to dress and appearance, uh, we know cultures change. 2,000 years later, men, does, men don't wear robes. We don't do that, wear robes to our knees. Or as and the Bible calls them, skirts. Skirt, we don't, yeah, men, <laughs> men, thank you for pointing that out. Men do not wear skirts today. That would be very inappropriate in our church culture or in, in 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 the culture in the culture and so you know my my opinion of the early church is everything other than their actual dress we should probably be modeling because uh it worked it's very practical their models and methods of fellowship connecting prayer revive it worked so i believe the book of Acts is the perfect model of church growth. I believe that. Yes. Uh, and I try to model our ministry and the church uh, after the book of Acts. And please do not be offended if you're a pastor, and I'm about to make a statement here. And if you disagree with me, you can write it on a $100 bill and send it to me. I, I would accept <laughs> it. But I believe there's a lot of things the modern apostolic church in America, there's a lot. A Just lot of things we do that's it's, not. This is forward talk. It's so. not biblical. Yeah. It's not go. in the book. It's man's preference. It's man's, uh, it's how they like to have church. You go to Louisiana, there's different church style than Tennessee. You Man, go I love to, how you said Louisiana, not Louisiana. Oh, it's Louisiana. It's so, yeah, I love that. That's right. And so, and you go to northern Ohio and to Cleveland and to Michigan, that culture, there's different culture. Some like songbooks, some like modern, contemporary, southern gospel. All that is preference. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with Book of Acts model. Yeah. And so Book of Acts model, what, when I talk about Book of Acts model, how close do you think the contemporary church should model first century? I think when it comes to message and method uh, of acting that message out, when it comes to prayer, small groups, connecting, I think we should be spot on we should with try, it. We should strive to be as close as possible. Yes. As uh, to the church, yes. first century church. But Brother Carroll, let me say this too. Can. As brethren... Uh, I, I think, you know, there was race issues in the book of Acts. The Grecian widows complained. There were, there were holiness issues, Acts 15. The Gentiles coming in, well, there were priests that were being converted as well, and they wanted to put the law of Moses yeah. on these new cons. So there were holiness issues. What I love about the book of Acts, which I don't think we have today, is the honest, transparent conversation between men of like precious faith about these preferences. And so this is part of what I'm seeking to accomplish. Yes, with, I love it. With forward talk. Yes. And and you know the idea the idea that the the apostles in the first century were 
all 100 in 100 percent agreement on That's everything. False. That they, they didn't have any disagreements. That they all believed exactly the same thing. That's they not all a true narrative. Held all the. It's not. It's no. absolutely the core, not true. John, you know as well as I do, our core doctrine: one God manifested in Christ. Yes. Repentance of your sins, mick, being mikvah, being baptized, uh, buried in water with the name of Jesus being called on you, yeah. and the infilling of the Spirit of God by evidence of speaking with another language is a that's is a the core thing. that was the june jude said let us earnestly contend for, for the, the faith. faith yeah when you talk about the faith it's not made up of 600 plus items the faith is one god yeah jesus name in filling of the holy spirit and living a life of faith paul had paul had serious conflict with other of the apostles serious he would withstood them to their faith, face, mm -hmm. called them out over inconsistencies yes. and, and hypocrisies in their practices. In their liberty, yeah, in I, their in, grace. Absolutely. Yes. And so so there wasn't 100% unity on every detail of how they lived practically, right. but their core theology was was unified. Brother John, what, what, con John, what concerns me today I don't know if there's grace among brothers. There isn't. There's not a lot. Like the early church had. Mm -hmm. If you don't see it my way, yeah. I'm not, the highway. I'm not coming to your fellowship meeting. That's right. If you don't see it my way, and, and not you're not that, preaching in my church. And not only are, am I, you're not going to preach in my church. Anybody that preaches in your church yeah, I'm not having is them. not preaching in yes. my church. I don't know how God, I do know how God I looks know at how that. I he feels about it. I He's, do. He doesn't I, like it at all. I need to have grace, like you preach today, investing in my own mercy. Yeah. I need to have grace and mercy. If something is a preference to me, but it's not a preference to you, I should not judge you and put you in hell That's right. for not having the same preference. And I need to trust you Yes. as a brother in Christ, as a friend, as a fellow laborer in the gospel. I need to trust you that when you perhaps go to preach somewhere yes. that that I may not would go, that I have to trust your your uh, grounding in the gospel. I have to trust who and what you are as a minister of the gospel. A abso and, and, absolutely. And trust that you know what you're doing when you're going to preach in a in a certain congregation or a certain area. A absolutely. I, I, I love this vast apostolic movement, this truth. It's huge. And it, I would be such a fool to think that the organization I belong to, or the local church here, if 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 there's smoke coming out of someone else's chimney, and we may not see eye to eye on preferences, I'd be a fool to say that's not fire. Yeah, one one man said it like this: You don't have to be my twin to be my brother. Amen. We can be brothers that's in Christ good. without being identical twins. That's good. And talking about the whole concept of of not having to agree on everything uh, to, to, f to work together to fulfill the, the core and common mission yes. of the church, which is advancing the kingdom of God through the oneness of God, baptism yes. in Jesus' name, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Uh, a friend of mine, Adam Solorio from Illinois, uh, made this observation. We actually talked about it earlier today. <clears throat> yes. That the willingness that we have to cut brothers off, to cut fellowship with people so easily over small petty trivial. trivial little things we will look if we get an odd and this is where a lot of it flows from we we have a personal conflict with a brother in christ and so we look until we can find an issue that yeah. we can use as an excuse yes to not to fellowship not to fellowship yeah. him when the issue is not really the issue yes the, the thing that we use to claim the reason why we disfellowship him is not really the issue at all most of the time it's completely it's totally a petty it, it, personal it's pe yes it's a petty personal petty, agenda petty, petty preferences and so we look down the list yes and we bypass the 400 things we agree on <laughs> and we find at least one the spec yeah we, we find the spec and then i use that as an excuse to disfellowship you yes but my friend adam solorio made an incredible observation mm -hmm. that we we only have the luxury of being that petty as a result of American affluence. Wow. Only an affluent That's church. Deep. That's deep and true. Only an affluent church has the luxury wow. to be so picky and petty over who we fellowship. And he made the point that if we ever got to the place to where 
communist, communist China is that instead of nitpicking whether or not the women in your church wear hair bows or colored hose or whether or not their, their, my, their my, shoe my. heel is over the three inch, three inch threshold. Exactly. That's deep. That's good. Wow. We would just be so thankful <sighs> that somebody else called on the name of Jesus. Yes. We would not be worried about all of these other petty little issues. And only in affluence, only only in a, in a peaceful church, uh, a peaceful country, in a peaceful culture, yes. can we, can, do we have the luxury to be so petty in the body of Christ? John, that, that, your friend nailed it. He that's did. powerful. I'd love I, to take the credit for yeah, it. But, that's, that's I'm awesome. an honest guy. I'm an honest well, guy. So. He, so one of our former general superintendents of the organization I belong to, a uh, great organization of fellowship, was uh, Robert Martin, one of our past superintendents. He preached a message, and the title was, I Will Not Fight My Brother. Yeah. We have more that binds us together yes. than divides us. And let me say this. We talk about the hypocrisy spirit or the pharisaical spirit. And many times we relate that to those that are uh, hard-leaning to a right of an issue. But let me say this. There is a pharisaical spirit. Here's the pharisaical spirit. If you don't see it like me, you're wrong. And it doesn't matter which if it, end of the spectrum no, you're on. I, I've seen it in the in far left in our movement. If if you don't, if you're not as liberal as me, then you're, bless God, then you're you're missing the grace opportunity. Yeah. So so we this is where, uh, and, and don't throw stones at me for saying this, but you know, in the middle of the road is a safe place. Yeah. You know, you get too far one way or the other. There's a ditch. There's on a both, ditch. There's a ditch on both there's sides. There's a ditch of the on road. both sides. Yes. And the the enemy does not care. He wants you in one of those. Which di ditch you wreck in? The ditch stops progression. Yeah, he doesn't care if you run off the right side of the no, road or the left side of the road. No, he does not. As long as you're in a ditch. As long as you're in a ditch. Yes. He, he does not care whatsoever which side of the road that you run off. Yes, sir. And uh, <clears throat> man, we we need each other more than we have ever needed each other in, I, the, in the history of the church. Yes, sir. And I believe that God is raising up a group of men yes. that are going to, to have, a, a, um, have the ability to model Book of Acts ministry. I believe it, yes. Book of Acts ministry yes. that, is willing, that is willing, like uh, the apostles did in the first century, to have their conflicts over practice. Yes, that are that are willing to look at each other in the face, have that conversation about where we disagree, yes. but at the end of the day, say, "Hey, we're in this together. Yes. We're preaching the same core gospel, and we may have a conflict over this particular practice, but what we don't have a conflict over is the is the centrality of the gospel. Yes, what and binds us together, and that centrality of the gospel is going to enable us to work together." even though we can have, in some cases, serious differences. That cause rifts, yeah. serious rifts. That's right. Yes. But being willing to acknowledge that we, are, that we are truly still brothers in Christ, and that is part of a Book of Acts church. Yes, it is. Is the ability, yes, it is. Is the ability to have revival with people that you don't agree with everything they do. Yes, sir. That's Book of Acts. That's Book of Acts revival. That's a Book of Acts church. Yes, sir. And I, I can, I can, uh, I, I can get behind a man that sincerely loves souls and is preaching this common doctrine. Yeah. And he may not wear a long sleeve white shirt every time he preaches, but I can. Support. He might not even wear a white shirt every he, time. Yeah, he, he may not even wear a white shirt. <laughs> but I can. We just want you to wear a shirt when you preach, but. <laughs> But other than that, we don't care what color it is. <laughs> but I, I, can, I can get behind a man that's promoting the message. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So what are you, what are, you, what are let me calm my, um, my, my <laughs> southern redneckery down here for yeah. a little bit. And re yeah, we got the dander up. <laughs> exactly. <going. laughs> let me restate this. What are three aspects of the church in the book of Acts um, do you think are, are really in, important? For the the modern contemporary church to model, yeah. Well, the th once again, these three, another preacher could have could possibly put another three. Yeah. But to me, I think these three examples work with local churches. 
I believe they work with organizations, movements. Uh, to me, number one would be the common doctrine. Yeah. We must rally. The Bible, Jesus said, you will be hated, not for skirt length, uh, not for sleeve length, not for facial hair or non-facial hair, yeah. not for a necklace, a brooch on the lapel. Somehow a brooch around the neck is much worse than a brooch on the lapel, I guess. He didn't say yeah. you're going to be hated for those two different brooches. Yeah. He said you're going to be hated for my namesake. Yeah. And we as brothers and sisters the quicker we come together on the common salvation, yes, sir. the common doctrine, and put some petty things behind, I think the further unified towards that book of Acts church yeah. that will be. Amen. Num number two Amen. is prayer. The early church prayed much, and they prayed often. Yes, sir. And they prayed together. Yes, sir. And I believe that common salvation mixed with prayer together and then mixing that with my third point, which is fellowship. Yeah. I believe those three things will produce a powerful organization, a powerful local church, a powerful movement, a powerful Christian. Yeah. When you have the common doctrine, when you have prayer, and when you have fellowship. Yes, sir. Th to me, those the are three. Fellowship is so important. Oh, it's so important. You know, God, there's such a principle when the Lord looked at man and said, it's not good that he be alone. for man to be alone. That's right. We, we know it's about a spouse, but it goes deeper no, than it, that. No, it's, it's, the, it's the first place where fellowship happens, but do you know it's where not man, the only place where fellowship happens. But do you know where man mimicked that feeling from God, his creator? Amen. God did not want to be. Alone, alone which is why he created image bearing creatures god could it, have created god could have created yes and he did create animals sure. he did create um living creatures but but not image no sir creatures. brother brother john he put he put image and likeness which has to do with our with creativity yes goings and doings he put image and likeness on us he did because he wanted to have fellowship with yeah. us and from how shallow would it be? I can't fellowship with you because maybe you believe in wedding bands or maybe, yeah. uh, and I'm not making light of any preferences, no. but, but for me to say you're less than, because so I'm not, do. but God fellowshiped me yeah. this Sunday. Yes, he did. I spoke in a heavenly language this Sunday, and he is ultimate holiness. Yeah. So if there's anybody less than, it's my relationship with God, yeah. but he still chose fellowship with me. Yes, sir. And so even if my personal preference goes against my brother or my sister, I choose fellowship yes. over my preference. Yeah, uh, Martin Ballesterel, uh I told you several of the funny things that oh, he yes. said today, but he made a statement that I, I believe it was him, and if I'm – Getting my source wrong, whoever the source of this is, please forgive me. <laughs> but I'm almost certain it was Martin Balasero made the statement in a minister session that I don't want to ref I don't want to refuse to call brother someone who God calls son. Mm. Wow, wow. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to refuse to call brother Whew. someone whom God what calls son. What qualifications do I have to make that call? Exactly. Wow. Only the Father. Only the Father. Only the Father yes. has the ability to determine whose sons are. Mm. I don't get to determine whose sons are. Sons don't have that no. call. Siblings, kingdom siblings. We can't make that Can't call. make that call. Only the Father. Only and, the Father. And the one place we find in Scripture where a son tried to make the call about who was qualified to be a son is in the story of, of the prodigal. Yes. And when the straying son tried to return, the staying son wanted him excluded from great, sonship. Great example. And great. so only the father, only the father, the, decides who qualifies for sonship. Yes. And the and the staying son sat outside the party. He didn't celebrate it. He did not celebrate him. And the father did not go outside and beg the, the, the no. straying son to come in or force him to come in. The father decides who the sons are. 
John. That's deep, man. That's I, I refuse to have an elder brother mentality. That's right. I will not be the elder brother. That's right. Only I refuse the father. It. Only, Only the father, the father that's, decides that's who awesome. sons are. So I don't want to refuse to call brother someone whom God calls son. Amen. And if they're if they're the father's son, they're my brother. They may be imperfect. They may be. Uh, they may not be at the same level of development and maturity as what what someone else may be. But if they are the son of the father, if they are the father's son, they are my brother. They're my brother. And 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 John, we. The kingdom of God, I relate it to a, a large swimming pool, and there there may be some of us that are in the four foot in. There may be some that are in the twelve foot in. There's some that's in the kiddie pool, but we're in the same pool. Yes, sir. We're in the kingdom of God. That's exactly Those right. that are in the kiddie pool and the ankle deep, they're in the same pool I'm in. They're gonna and they're gonna grow up. They will grow, and they will be able to walk into deeper waters. Yes, and eventually we'll all swim together. Yes, but until then. We're still all in the same kingdom, all in the same pool. I love that. And I'm not going to isolate them. Absolutely not. No way. And the reason why we have the kiddie pool, the, the, the shallow end, is so that they can participate. It's an introduction in, to, to so come deeper. So that they deeper. can participate in the kingdom with we, us. We as Pentecostals are very spiritual. Yes. Galatians 6 and 1 is a scripture that I think we should all put in our pockets. Yeah. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault. Yeah. Ye which consider yourself spiritual, restore, restore such, such a one. one. John, when did that when did that change? It feels like today we as preachers we have that grace with people that yeah. sit on our pews. Well, why not fellow ministers? W when did that change? That's right. I choose to be spiritual. Yeah. And and when we don't restore, it says more about our spirituality than it does that brother's fault. Well, well it, it, let me bring the warning that the Scripture bears out. It Consider says, considering thyself, lest you be tempted in like manner. The person who cannot restore is not spiritual. Not spi and, and we They're not spiritual. <laughs> they're not spiritual. And we tend to make people look super spiritual who... Take a hard line on a brother in a fault. The Bible says they're not spiritual. That's not spiritual at all. How? I don't want to get off script here, John, but there's no. Why, why do we have great grace with people on the pews, but not great grace with people in the pulpit? But we refuse to restore in the pulpit. It's it's uh, unbelievable to me the the way that we have done that, and what it does is when we put when we only allow people in the pulpit which have picture, appear to have picture-perfect lives mm -hmm. that, that ha appear to have just this, this squeaky clean, everything's absolutely yeah. perfect. What, we do, what we're doing is we're modeling a level of perfection that the average person in the pew cannot identify with. Yes. And, and so when we, when we do in those occasions allow imperfect people to preach the gospel. What it says to that person yes. sitting in the pew is well, with all of my struggles, with all of my failures, God can use me. John, I think you I think you're perfect. Every minister I'm in fellowship <laughs> with, perfect. I think you're I think you're perfect. But I know that I, I can be a wretch, okay? Yeah. Uh but James says if a man says he has no sin, if a man says he has not sinned, yeah. he's a liar. He's a liar. No truth in him. There's no perfect ministry family. No, there isn't. That is a false narrative. We all have issues, but thank God his grace is sufficient. Absolutely. Absolutely. One final question yes. here, and this one may get us in more trouble than what. what get you in trouble. <laughs> get me in trouble. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm used to it. So. Um, <clears throat> question number three for what it looks like and how closely we should model a Book of Acts church. So mm -hmm. obviously, one of the three things that you talked about in terms of uh, aspects of, of a Book of Acts church that, that are important to model was the gospel, the, the core foundation of a common doctrine. Mm -hmm. And obviously that includes, that implies preaching. Mm -hmm. And so when we go through the Book of Acts and we read the preaching of the apostles, the preaching of the early church in the conversion yes. of believers, yes. which is what we're all after. 
in, in preaching the gospel, it's conversion of believers. There is no record in the book of Acts of the apostles preaching hell as an evangelistic sermon. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't think that there is an explicit reference of the apostles preaching about hell to anyone, right. period, mm -hmm. in the book of Acts. There is no sermon on hell in the book of Acts. Right. The gospel of the kingdom, the, the name of Jesus, um, the gospel of the kingdom and the name of Jesus was the conversion message it, it was paramount. of the yes. apostles. With that said, if we're going to model the methods and the message of an Acts church, what role, if any, ought uh, hell to play yeah. in our evangelistic efforts? Uh, uh, great I, great you, question. I have not heard your yeah. answer. I have no clue what yeah. you're going to say. Yeah. And so I'm excited well, to hear what this response well, is. Well, I, I hate be. to let you down. But, uh, <laughs> I think the close, I think the early church comes close. I, I think. Peter said, save yourself from this untoward generation, which gives us a, a reality and a narrative that there is an acceptable way, an unacceptable way. Once again, I don't want to cross theological swords, but I'm used to doing that some. Uh, if you believe in dispensationalism and dispensational truth, you understand that God dealt with man. And just for honest uh, like transparency here, I don't. I'm not yeah, a dispensationalist. I got you. Which is a... Which is a difference between us, which sure. is not a... Bless God, this is over. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> which is a perfect example of two brothers who disagree Have on, a, a, different on a secondary yes. on a secondary issue. Yes. Uh, but I'm perfectly Well, let me say that not, not, to, not to go deep into dispensationalism, yeah. but uh, I'm opening some cans of worms here. Oh, that's all so right. So the term son of God... Yeah relates back even to the garden. Adam was the son of God. Absolutely. Son of God has a connotation of righteousness. And I know there's some that believe that sons of God, daughters of men, that was angelic uh, relationships with women. Jesus in the New Testament tells us angels, uh, the glorified body, the angelic body does not do that. Yeah. The book of Hebrews says God has no time at any time ever called an angel a son. Yeah. He's never done that. So, a son of God, and humor me with my dispensationalism. That's oh, uh, the son of God. Every dispensation, in, in my opinion, had responsibilities, yes. and when you kept that responsibility, you were considered a son of God or righteous. Okay. So John says in this gospel message, uh, to as many as received him, to them gave he power to, to become, become the, the sons. sons of God. So, in my humble opinion, repentance, baptism, infilling of the Spirit, uh, puts us into that situation of a son of God. Mm -hmm. With that being said, that makes us a righteous line. There is an unrighteous line. Yeah. And we know this isn't in the book of Acts, but in judgment, yeah. the whole books will be open. Everyone that has ever lived will be judged. He'll say to some, enter in, and he'll cast out others. Those that are righteous or have lived righteous by their dispensation enter in. Yeah. So should hell be, the term hell is used, but it's Shiloh for the grave when, it's, when the prophet is quoted that you would not, David said, you will not leave my soul in hell. In hell. That's in the book of Acts, but that's the grave. Yeah, that's not that's final Hades. punishment. It's not Hades uh, the, the, or lake of fire. Yeah. But I do believe that our paramount message, Bishop Peters, G.D. Peters used to make a statement that if you preach fearfully, yeah. if you preach people into fear, yes. that they would serve Satan if he was to appear. Yeah, because that would he would come and, promoting and fear. fear. Oh, so, that's an, I like that. That's an incredible point. So the gospel is not, he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I think our paramount message should be save yourself from this untoward generation. Yes. And here's how you do that, the Acts message. Acts 2.38. Uh, Acts 2.38, that's how you do it. With that being said, there is another side of that coin. The rep, the, not in the book of Acts, but Revelation, the yeah. epistle, uh, the revelatory writing of, of John. Yes. There is judgment coming. No doubt. And those that did not obey the responsibility, pardon my dispensationalism, That's right. of their dispensation will be judged yes. into that situation. Absolutely. So I think it's fair as preachers 
not to dwell every sermon on hell fire. Yeah. Now, I might get crucified by saying that. I think presenting the lovely Jesus yes. and the lovely message of the cross should be our paramount, overwhelming majority of preaching. Absolutely. Save yourself. Preaching the cross of yes. Christ. I determined not to know anything among you, save, save Jesus, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yes. Acts, when they heard the things concerning the name of the Jesus, name. the kingdom of God and the name of yes. Jesus, they were baptized. Yes. And so I think the, the presentation in the book of Acts was a message of the kingdom and the, the kingdom and the name. The name. The and kingdom, the person of the name. And the person the of, the of the name. The God of the name. So when, when you read the Gospels, or let's just include the entire New Testament, mm -hmm. when... When the uh, New Testament warns about hell, mm -hmm. almost always it's to religious people. Mm -hmm. Jesus preached about hell to Pharisees. Yeah. Jesus preached about hell to the religious leaders within the Jewish nation. You're quoting King, King James, I'm sure. Exactly. Okay, Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Right. King James only. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, for those of you that know me, you know that's a joke. <laughs> Hey, if the King James was good enough for the apostles, it's good enough for me. <laughs> that's right. If that's what they if they used it, I'm that's using right. it. If the King James was good enough for the apostles, it's good uh, enough. They they used the Tanakh, but anyway. But, but <laughs> <laughs> is that a Tanakh knock joke? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't prove the gospel out of the Old Testament, that's go how to the, go study. That's how the apostles preached yes. the gospel yeah. was from the was yeah. from the prophets. That is not to say. That is not to say that there is a there is a judgment coming yes. for sure. Yes, there is a judgment coming, no doubt about it. Yeah. And the closest I can see the Book of Acts getting to it is I believe it's Acts seventeen thirty one, and I'm going off the top of my head, where the Bible makes the statement that there is coming a day in which God will judge the world mm -hmm. by that man talking yes. about Jesus Christ. So they did talk about a coming day in yeah. which God is going to judge and, the world. And if there is judgment, there's reward and punishment. punishment. Yeah. But the point is, is that they did not use was the, the main, threat of was not hell. the main focus. It's if it wasn't if you don't convert, then you're going to hell. I never. At no point was save yourself from the untoward generation. And that but was it's not a, save yourself from hell. No, that was save, a, that it's, was save it's, yourself from an untoward it's generation. It's come to a better life, a exactly. more ex, a more excellent way. And it wasn't save yourself from hell. Right. It was save yourself from this untoward, yes, the untoward generation. generation. Yes. And so. No doubt about it, there's a hell. The Bible's sure. clear about yes. the fact that there's a hell. Um, it's it's serious. It's, it's Should it real. dominate our preaching? Absolutely no. not. No. I think what should dominate our preaching is the death, burial, and resurrection oh, yes. of Jesus That's the Christ. Gospel. The gospel yes. message ought yes, to sir. be the thing. And if the gospel doesn't convert you, if the gospel doesn't transform your heart, there's no hope. No amount of threat of hell's, hell. Hell's not going to convert Hell can't you. convert. The no. gospel converts. Yes. And so... That's good. And so I think the church needs a return to the gospel. The gospel yes. and the centrality of preaching the gospel of Jesus yes, sir. Christ. I'm with you, John. I'm with you, JC. And I, the whole, I agree with everything you said about dispensationalism. Good. He's convinced. All right. So you heard it that the, he's a the, dispensationalist. The, the principle of what you said about dispensationalism. <laughs> yeah. I agree with. Yeah. I would frame it in terms of covenants. Yeah, I got you. Uh, a little bit, but sure. the principle of what you said, I agree 100%. Yeah. Sonship. Sonship. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. And so this is how you disagree as friends and brothers in Christ. Yeah. And I'll let you buy me a hamburger. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Krispy Kreme. So we do need a, a Book of Acts church. Yes. We need a first century church yes. in the 21st century. Oh, yes. One that models one that models the the message yes the gospel of the of the first century the discipline of prayer the discipline of prayer and fellowship and fellowship i, I believe so. and if we do that oh. the church will be as unstoppable oh. in the 21st century as it was the first century I, I believe john that uh he has the adversary realized early on he could not beat this movement <laughs> and about 300 ad 300 years after, he, he brought a counterfeit doctrine. I'm not going to get into all that. But then he moved early on even into division. Yeah. He couldn't stop us, but to slow us down, he tried to divide us. Yes, sir. And if we're wise mm -hmm. to his schemes, men of God, women of God, he cannot slow the church down. That's right. He can only divide us. Yes, sir. And I refuse to be divided 
from a brother and a sister that believes in this common salvation. Amen. If you are baptized in the name of Jesus, yes. believe in the mighty God in Christ, yes. believe in the infilling of the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking with other tongues, yes. at the very core fundamental level, you are my brother, yes. you are my sister in Christ, and uh, together we are going to have revival. We are going to change yes. the world. God is Amen. going to do something amazing through his church. I'm excited to be a part of the body of Christ. Yes. I'm excited. You are my brother in Christ. Oh, yes, sir. I'm excited. And I'm excited about what God is going to do through us together I am as, too, brothers, John. as brothers in Christ. I am too. And, yes. and just to say that being in, your, in the church here, the local church here, was refreshing to me personally thank you it was it was a great worship experience for my wife and i thank you to be here on this sunday we were encouraged and i thank god for what he's doing in and through you and uh lighthouse church here in in kingsport tennessee thank you and thank you for joining me for this for this conversation uh, it, it was my honor to be part of this great uh, forward talk and thank uh, you for those of you that are still watching us right now, thank you for uh, joining with us as we continue to reverse the silence through Forward Talk. Yes. God bless you in Jesus' name.